Hi there, welcome back. It's week seven. This week we will be studying unit seven. We are talking about places around town, locating places, describing neighborhoods, and describing apartments. Let's start by looking at the vocabulary on page 55. Page 55 introduces vocabulary we will be using in this unit. All of the vocabulary are places you will find either in your neighborhood or in the city. Number one, bakery. Number two, barbershop. Number three, bookstore. Number four, bus station. Number five, cafeteria. Number six, clinic. Number seven, department store. Number eight, drugstore or pharmacy. Number nine, hair salon. Number ten, health club or gym, fitness center. Number eleven, hotel. Number 12, laundromat. Number 13, school. 14, train station. And 15, video store. Let's have a little talk about some of those. Um, number 2 and number 9. These are more traditional vocabulary. Mm, a barbershop traditionally is for men to get their hair cut. Whereas a hair salon was, again, traditionally where women had their hair styled and cut. These days, barbershops are not very common and men and women both go to salons, hair shops. You can still find barbershops. The main difference being that a traditional barbershop will do a shave, which is Something I don't do these days. Um, what else? A cafeteria, number five. We know that the university has a cafeteria. A lot of large companies that have many staff, they often have a cafeteria, a work cafeteria. Uh, number 15, a video store. When was the last time you saw a video store? You might be able to find DVD stores, but with online streaming, Netflix, YouTube, Amazon Prime Video, IPTV, there isn't really the demand for video or DVD stores so much these days. Uh, number 12, laundromat. Sometimes could be confused with dry cleaners. A laundromat is a self-service, like a coin wash. You put the money in and you start the machine yourself. You load the laundry yourself. That is a laundromat. Is there anything else? Number six, a clinic. You could also say that it was a hospital. Clinics are often smaller. Um, in the UK, a clinic is for general medicine. We call them a GP. If you need more serious treatment, they will uh, advise you to go to a hospital. Number 13, school. That could be a university too. Number 11, hotel. Why is it not a motel? Well, the picture shows you a bellboy. Motels generally do not have bellboys. That is the vocabulary here. Let's move on then to page 56 and look at some questions and answers using this vocabulary. Page 56, where's the restaurant? So starting on page 56, we are talking about our neighborhood. We are talking about the locations of places in the neighborhood. We will be using 
prepositions. There are four main prepositions in this section. Next to, across from, between, and around the corner from. There are four examples of this vocabulary at the top of page 56. Let's have a look. I will demonstrate to you in the picture. Do you see me there? Mm -hmm. He is next to. I am next to the bank. Hi. Right? If we ask, where are you? I'm next to the bank. Where's the restaurant? It's next to the bank. The restaurant is next to the bank. Where's the supermarket is the next example. Or where am I? I'm across from the movie Hi. theater. I am across from the movie theater. That's right. Where's the supermarket? It's across from the movie theater. It's across from the movie theater. Next we have between. Where am I? I'm between the library and the park. I am Hi. between the library and the park. Where's the school? It's between the library and the park. And the last one, around the corner from. So we can see the hospital. Where am I? I'm around the corner from the hospital. Hi. Corner meaning two roads. So the hospital is on this road and the post office or me, I'm on this road. This is the corner around the corner from. Where's the post office? It's around the corner from the post office or I am around the corner from the post office. So I will ask you the eight questions on page 56. You can pause the video, try to answer the questions, and then I will give you the answers. Number one, where's the bank? Where is the bank? Number two, where is the post office? Where's the post office? Number three. Where is the restaurant? Where's the restaurant? Number four. Where is the hospital? Where's the hospital? Number five. Where is the hotel? Where's the hotel? Number six. Where's the gas station? Where is the gas station? Number seven. Where's the clinic? Where is the clinic? And number eight. Where's the bakery? Where is the bakery? Let's have a look at the answers. Number one, where's the bank? It's next to the school. It's next to the school. Number two, where's the post office? It's across from the park. It's across from the park. Number three. Where's the restaurant? It's between the bank and the library. Could you say it's next to the bank? Sure, it is next to the bank, but it's also next to the library. So we'd use between. It is between the bank and the library. As with many things in language, there are good answers and there is the better answer. Between is the better answer here. Number four. 
Where's the hospital? It's around the corner from the movie theatre. It's around the corner from the movie theatre. The movie theatre is on this road and the hospital is on this road. Around the corner from. Number five. Where's the hotel? It's across from the library. Across from the library. Number six. Where's the gas station? It's next to the bus station. It's next to the bus station. Number seven. Where's the clinic? It's around the corner from the fire station. It's around the corner from the fire station. And the last one, number eight. Where's the bakery? It's between the video store and the barbershop. The video store makes me laugh every time because it reminds me of renting videos. That shows my age, I think. Yes, blockbuster. Anyhow, the bakery is between the video store and the barbershop. Great. Before we continue, I would like to talk about in front of and across from. Are they similar? They, they have something in common. It's about being this direction. However, in front of is much closer. If we look at the example of me with the supermarket and the movie theater, here I am in front of the movie theater. But I am across from, I am across from the supermarket because there is a road between the supermarket and the movie theater. Similarly, if we were in the university, I would demonstrate using the hallway. This classroom is across from this classroom because there is a hallway. Okay, uh, let's move on to page 57 where we will add some more detail to these questions and answers. Is there a laundromat in this neighborhood? Page 57 uses the structure of the question on page 56, but we add some extra detail. If we look at the example, there is a young man holding his laundry and he is asking a woman about a laundromat. He wants to wash his clothes or do his laundry. The extra detail we are adding is the street name. In the example, it is Main Street. The structure of the question, is there a bididid in this neighborhood? For example, is there a bank in this neighborhood? Let's have a look at the conversation. A, excuse me. Is there a laundromat in this neighborhood? B. Yes, there's a laundromat on Main Street next to the supermarket. If we look at the picture, we can see the details. Main Street, laundromat, supermarket. Wonderful. So the book gives you six examples of questions you can ask. Again, I will ask you the six questions. Feel free to pause the video, try to answer the questions, and then we'll go through them together and I will give you the answers. Number one. Excuse me, is there a drugstore in this neighborhood? Excuse me, is there a drugstore in this neighborhood? Number two. Excuse me, is there a clinic in this neighborhood? Excuse me, is there a clinic in this neighborhood? Number three. Excuse me, is there a department store in this neighborhood? Excuse me, 
Is there a department store in this neighborhood? Number four. Excuse me, is there a hair salon in this neighborhood? Excuse me, is there a hair salon in this neighborhood? Number five. Excuse me, is there a bookstore in this neighborhood? Excuse me, is there a bookstore in this neighborhood? And number six. Excuse me, is there a post office in this neighborhood? Excuse me, is there a post office in this neighborhood? Wonderful. Let's have a look at the answers together. Number one. Excuse me, is there a drugstore in this neighborhood? Yes, there's a drugstore on Main Street. It's across from the church. Yes, there's a drugstore on Main Street. It's across from the church. Number two. Excuse me, is there a clinic in this neighborhood? Yes, there's one on Main Street, between the bank and the barbershop. Yes, there's one on Main Street, between the bank and the barbershop. Number three. Excuse me, is there a department store in this neighborhood? Yes, there's one on Central Avenue, around the corner from... The police station. Yes, there is a department store on Central Avenue, around the corner from the police station. Number four. Excuse me, is there a hair salon in this neighborhood? Yes, there is a hair salon on Central Avenue, next to the bakery. Yes, there is a hair salon on Central Avenue next to the bakery. Number five. Excuse me, is there a bookstore in this neighborhood? Yes, there's one on State Street, between the health club and the cafeteria. Yes, there's a bookstore on State Street, between the health club and the cafeteria. Number six. Excuse me, is there a post office in this neighborhood? Yes, there is a post office on State Street, across from the train station. Yes, there is a post office on State Street, across from the train station. As you may have noticed, I sometimes used one instead of the name of the place. It's used as a pronoun. Is there a pencil? Yes, there's one, meaning a pencil, on the desk. Is there a drugstore near here? Yes, there's one on Main Street. There is a drugstore. There is one. On page 56 and on page 57, for more practice, you can always make new questions. Using this page, you can also ask new questions. For example, on number one, ask about the church instead of the drugstore. Number two, ask about the barbershop instead of the clinic. Use that for extra practice. On page 56, you can also make new questions to practice. For example, number one, ask about the school. Where's the school? It's next to the bank. Or number six, where is the gas station? Or number eight, where is the video store? It's next to the bakery. Excellent. Let's move on to the next page. Page 58 invites you to talk about your own neighborhood. So this is a little bit difficult to do with online learning, but I will show you a map of my neighborhood, which is near Unheng Sagari in Nowangu. I will ask myself questions 
about this area using places on the map. So here we can see Unheng Sagari, and I could ask you, for example, is there a bakery in your neighborhood? And the answer would be, yes, there is. There is a Paris baguette or a Paris baguette across from or next to or between. You could ask, is there a department store in your neighborhood? And I would say, no, there isn't because there is no department store in Jungae Ildong, Jungae Won Dong. If we were talking about No Wangu, then yes, there is a Lotte department store near No One Station, but we will just focus on this area. Great. So I look forward to asking you some questions in the Flipgrid video, and I look forward to seeing your answers. Let's move on to page 59 and discuss apartments describing your home. Page 59. Is there a stove in the kitchen? At the top of page 59, we see two examples. There is a man and a woman who are both looking to rent an apartment. So they are at the rental office or the real estate office. They are asking questions about what is or isn't in the apartments. In the first example, is there a stove in the kitchen? Yes, there is. There is a very nice stove in the kitchen. Oh, good. So he's happy that there is a stove in the apartment. In the next example, the lady asks, is there a refrigerator in the kitchen? No, there isn't. Oh, I see. Now maybe she is happy there, is a refriger there isn't a refrigerator because she has her own refrigerator. Or maybe she's disappointed. Oh, I see. Because she needs a refrigerator. Either way, oh good, no, oh I see, are your answers. As with the other questions and answers, I will read the questions for you. You can pause the video, try to answer, and then I will give you the answers at the end. Number one. Is there a window in the kitchen? Is there a window in the kitchen? Something to remember here is that the picture is just to give you the hint about the topic we are talking about. The picture is to give you the hint about what we are talking about. In picture number one, there is a window, but that is just to tell you what we are discussing. The answer could be no, even though we can see the answer is yes, there is. Number two, we can see a fire escape. But the answer is no, there isn't. Number two, is there a fire escape? Is there a fire escape? Number three, is there a closet in the bedroom? Is there a closet in the bedroom? Number four, is there an elevator? in the building? Is there an elevator in the building? Number five. Is there an air conditioner in the bedroom? Is there an air conditioner in the bedroom? Number six. Is there a superintendent in the building? Is there a superintendent in the building? What is a superintendent, you might be asking. He is somebody who works in the apartment building and his job is to take care of repairs, fixing lights, making sure the elevator works correctly. 
those kind of jobs. Number seven, is there a bus stop near the building? Is there a bus stop near the building? Number eight, is there a jacuzzi in the bathroom? Is there a jacuzzi in the bathroom? Well done, let's have a look at the answers. Number one, is there a window in the kitchen? Yes, there is. There's a very nice window in the kitchen. Oh, good. Number two. Is there a fire escape? No, there isn't. Oh, I see. Is there a fire escape? No, there isn't. Oh, I see. Sounds a little bit dangerous these days to not have a fire escape. Most buildings, by law, should have fire escapes. Number three. Is there a closet in the bedroom? Yes, there is. There is a very nice closet in the bedroom. Oh, good. Is there a closet in the bedroom? Yes, there is. There is a very nice closet in the bedroom. Oh, good. Number four. Is there an elevator in the building? No, there isn't. Oh, I see. Is there an elevator in the building? No, there isn't. Oh, I see. Well, that won't be, won't be so bad if you live on the second floor or third floor. But these days, a lot of apartments have 15, 20, even 30 floors. Without an elevator, that would be a lot of exercise every day. Number five, is there an air conditioner in the bedroom? Yes, there is. There's a very nice air conditioner in the bedroom. Oh, good. Looking at the picture, it doesn't look so nice, but it is an air conditioner and that is nice to have in the bedroom. Number six, is there a superintendent in the building? No, there isn't. Oh, I see. Number seven, is there a bus stop near the building? No, there isn't. Oh, I see. But maybe there's a train station or a subway station. Mm. And number eight, is there a jacuzzi in the bathroom? Yes, there is. There is a very nice jacuzzi in the bathroom. Oh, good. Wow, imagine having a jacuzzi, a hot tub in your bathroom. That would be awesome. Okay, well done. That's the end of page 59. Let's move on to page 60. Page 60. How many bedrooms are there in the apartment? Page 60 introduces asking about how many, quantity. When you are renting an apartment, a common question is about how many bedrooms or how many bathrooms, even how many windows or how many elevators. You might be concerned about closets or washing machines or even how many floors in the building. In the example, it shows you the question and answer structure. How many windows are there in the bedroom? And there are two example answers. There is one window in the bedroom. There is one window in the bedroom. Or there are two windows in the bedroom. There is, there are depending on the answer. There is or there are. The gentleman is asking about bedrooms. Let's read together. A. Tell me, how many bedrooms are there in the apartment? B. There are two bedrooms in the apartment. 
A. Two bedrooms? B. Yes, that's right. So in this conversation, the gentleman asks about how many bedrooms. The lady answers. And then the gentleman confirms the answer. Two bedrooms? Yes, that's right. Let's have a look at the questions. Feel free to pause the video, try to answer the questions, and then I will give you the answers. Number one. Tell me, how many floors are there in the building? Tell me, how many floors are there in the building? Number two. Tell me, how many windows are there in the living room? Tell me, how many windows are there in the living room? Number three. Tell me, how many closets are there in the apartment? Tell me, how many closets are there in the apartment? Number four. Tell me, how many apartments are there in the building? How many apartments are there in the building? Number five. Tell me, how many washing machines are there in the basement? Tell me, how many washing machines are there in the basement? And number six. Tell me, how many bathrooms are there in the apartment? Tell me, how many bathrooms are there in the apartment? Great, let's have a look at the answers. Number one. Tell me, how many floors are there in the building? There are four floors in the building. Four floors? Yes, that's right. Number two. Tell me, how many windows are there in the living room? There are three windows in the living room. Three windows? Yes, that's right. Number three. Tell me, how many closets are there in the apartment? There are five closets in the apartment. Five closets? Yes, that's right. Number four. Tell me, how many apartments are there in the building? There are 30 apartments in the building. 30 apartments? Yes, that's right. Number five. Tell me, how many washing machines are there in the basement? There are two washing machines in the basement. And number six. Tell me, how many bathrooms are there in the apartment? There are two and a half bathrooms in the apartment. Two and a half? Yes, that's right. Wonderful. Let's just talk about a couple of details here. The difference between building and apartment. In number one, we're asking about the building. How many floors in the building? From the first floor to the top floor. In number two, number three, we are talking about a room or the apartment, the place where you live, your home. There are five closets in the apartment. Maybe there are five bedrooms, and each bedroom has one closet. Windows in the living room. Three, three windows in the living room. Hopefully, there are other windows in the bedrooms, in the kitchen, maybe. In number four, we are back to the building. How many apartments or how many homes in the building. Number five might seem a little strange. Washing machines in the basement. Well, in Western apartments, it's quite common that people share facilities. 
if it's student accommodation, they could share kitchens, they could share washing facilities. Sometimes they are in the basement, other times they are on each floor. Depends on the layout. Number six, they suggest there is a half bathroom, two and a half bathrooms. Hmm, maybe there's a main bathroom, an ensuite bathroom, and a half bathroom. What is a half bathroom? Maybe it's just a toilet, or maybe it's just a shower. But that could be the half. Wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. That is the end of page 60. Page 61 and page 62 work together. Let's have a look at page 61 first. On page 61, there is a picture of an apartment building. Not a very big apartment, but there are three floors. There is a basement. There is a rooftop. And there are several people. In the middle, you can see into one of the apartments. There is a cross section where you can look inside the apartment. On page 62, there are three sets of questions about this picture. We will be asking, is there? Are there? And how many? So the first set of questions, is there? The second set of questions, are there? And the third set of questions, how many? Let's have a look at those questions. Page 62, the questions. So using the picture from page 61, we will answer these questions. There are 19 questions, so this will take a few minutes. I will ask you the questions first, and then we will look through the answers together. Number one through eight, we are using the structure, is there? Is there a? Or is there an? So, number one, is there a stove in the kitchen? Is there a stove in the kitchen? Number two, is there a refrigerator in the kitchen? Is there a refrigerator in the kitchen? Number three, is there a superintendent in the building? Is there a superintendent in the building? Number four, is there an elevator in the building? Is there an elevator in the building? Number five, is there a fire escape? Is there a fire escape? Number six, is there a satellite dish? Is there a satellite dish on the roof? Number six, is there a satellite dish on the roof? Number seven, is there a mailbox near the building? Is there a mailbox near the building? Number eight, is there a bus stop near the building? Is there a bus stop near the building? Okay, when you're answering these questions, if you can see it in the picture, then the answer is yes, there is. If you can't see it, then the answer is no, there isn't. Similarly, with questions 9 through 15, if you can see them, the answer is yes, there are. If you can't see them, the answer is no, there aren't. Number nine, are there any children in the building? Are there any children in the building? Nine through 15, we are using the structure, are there? Are there any, dot, 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 are there any? 
Number nine. Are there any children in the building? Are there any children in the building? Number ten. Are there any cats in the building? Are there any cats in the building? Number eleven. Are there any mice in the basement? <sighs> Are there any mice in the basement? Number twelve. Are there any cockroaches in the building? Are there any cockroaches in the building? Number thirteen. Are there any broken windows in the building? Are there any broken windows in the building? Number fourteen. Are there any holes in the walls? Are there any holes in the walls? Number fifteen. Are there any washing machines in the basement? Are there any washing machines in the basement? And the last four questions, number 16, 17, 18, and 19, we are asking how many are there in the bididit? Number 16, how many rooms are there in the apartment? How many rooms are there in the apartment? Number 17. How many floors are there in the building? How many floors are there in the building? Number 18. How many closets are there in the bedroom? How many closets are there in the bedroom? And number 19. How many windows are there in the living room? How many windows are there in the living room? Wonderful. Let's go back to page 61 and look at the answers together. Number one. Is there a stove in the kitchen? Yes, there is. Number two. Is there a refrigerator in the kitchen? No, there isn't. Number three. Is there a superintendent in the building? Yes, there is. Number four. Is there an elevator in the building? Yes, there is. Really? No, there isn't. Sorry. No, there isn't an elevator in the building. Number five. Is there a fire escape? Yes, there is. Number six. Is there a satellite dish on the roof? Yes, there is. Number seven. Is there a mailbox near the building? Yes, there is. And number eight. Is there a bus stop near the building? Yes, there is. Number nine. Is there... Sorry. Number nine. Are there any children in the building? Yes, there are. There are two children in the building. Number 10. Are there any cats in the building? No, there aren't. But there are two dogs. Number 11. Are there any mice in the basement? Yes, there are. There are two mice in the basement. Number 12. Are there any cockroaches in the building? Yes, there are. There are five cockroaches in the basement. Number 13. Are there any broken windows in the building? Yes, there is. There is one broken window in the living room. Number 14. Are there any holes in the walls? Yes, there is. There is a hole between the bedroom and the kitchen. And number 15. Are there any washing machines in the basement? No, there aren't. Number 16. How many rooms are there in the apartment? 
There are four rooms in the apartment. Living room, kitchen, bedroom, and bathroom. Number 17. How many floors are there in the building? There are three floors in the building and one basement. Number 18. How many closets are there in the bedroom? There is one closet in the bedroom. And number 19. How many windows are there in the living room? There are six windows in the living room. Very good. That's the end of the questions on page 62. Let's move on to page 63. Page 63 is a reading activity talking about a new shopping mall. The new shopping mall. Everybody in Brewster is talking about the city's new shopping mall. The mall is outside the city, next to the Brewster Airport. There are more than 100 stores in the mall. There are two big department stores. There are many clothing stores for men, women, and children. There's a bookstore, and there's a video store. There are two drug stores, and there are four restaurants. There's even a large movie theater. Almost all the people in Brewster are happy that their city's new shopping mall is now open. But some people aren't happy. The owners of the small stores in the old center of town are very upset. They are upset because many people aren't shopping in the stores in the center of town. They're shopping at the new mall. Mm, very interesting. There are a few shopping malls in Seoul, for example. Maybe the oldest shopping mall would be Coex, Coex Mall. There's also Times Square and D-Cube. I'm sure there are others that I haven't been to yet. Um, department stores are not the same thing as shopping malls. A shopping mall is just a large collection of shops inside a building, whereas a department store is one building, one brand, that sells lots of different products. Let's have a look at the reading checkup. Your job is to choose the correct answer to complete the sentence A, B, or C. Number one. Everybody in Brewster is C, talking about the mall. Number two. In the mall, there are two drugstores. Number three. In the mall, there are B. Restaurants and drugstores. Number four. The store owners in the center of town are upset because A. People aren't shopping in their stores. Excellent. Let's move on. Let's have a look at page 64. Page 64 is another reading activity. Amy's apartment building. Amy's apartment building. Amy's apartment building is in the center of town. Amy is very happy there because the building is in a very convenient place. Across from the building, there is a bank, a post office, and a restaurant. Next to the building, there is a drugstore and a laundromat. Around the corner from the building, there are two supermarkets. There is a lot of noise near Amy's apartment building. There are a lot of cars on the street. And there are a lot of people on the sidewalks all day and all night. However, Amy isn't very upset about the noise in her neighborhood. Her building is in the center of town. 
It's a very busy place, but it's a convenient place to live. I feel like Amy sometimes. Where I live, probably where you live if you are in Seoul, it is noisy, it is busy, but it's convenient. I think that is why most people like living in Seoul, because it's convenient. Not always quiet, but it is convenient. Let's have a look at the reading checkup. There are five questions for you to answer, and then there are five statements that you can choose if they are true or false. Let's have a look at page 65. Page 65 gives you an opportunity to talk about a picture. It is Edward's apartment building. It is very similar to the picture on page 64, Amy's apartment building. So use the model on page 64 to talk about Edward's apartment building and Edward's neighborhood. Very good. The next activity is a listening activity. There are two listening activities at the bottom of page 65. First, what places do you hear? Next, true or false? Listen to the conversation and then decide if it's true or false. Very good. The very last page of Unit 7 is pronunciation. This week it is about rising intonation to check understanding. This was demonstrated on page, page 60 when we asked how many are there? How many windows are there? There are five windows. Five windows? Five windows? Yes, that's right. That is called rising intonation. Let's have a look at the examples. Two bedrooms. Two bedrooms? Two bedrooms? Two bedrooms? Five closets. Five closets? Next to the bank. Next to the bank? Next to the bank? On Main Street. On Main Street? So again, you're checking understanding. You're making sure you have the right information. For example, is there a bank in this neighborhood? Yes, there's one on Main Street. On Main Street? Yes, that's right. Where is the bank? It's next to the supermarket. Next to the supermarket? Yes, that's right. How about the next five? Three windows. Three windows? Twenty floors. Twenty floors? Across from the clinic. Across from the clinic? On Central Avenue? On Central Avenue? Excellent. So that is the end of Unit 7. Again, there will be a Flipgrid video this week where I ask you questions about my neighborhood. I will also ask you questions about your neighborhood and your apartment building. Wonderful. Bye-bye.